Hey everybody, this is Joe from the Northeastern Native Plant Digest, and today we're going to be talking about May apples. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a great week and happy 4th of July. Uh, today I wanted to talk about Podophyllum peltatum, or May apple, also known as wild mandrake or Indian apple. So these are a native plant that's native to the eastern uh, section of the United States, up into Canada, all the way down into Florida. Uh, typically you're going to find these growing in zones uh, 3 through 8. So these are uh, spring ephemeral. These come up in uh, in March and April uh, when a lot of the other spring plants are coming up and uh, typically these are going to bloom in May. Now they get a single white flower on them and uh, these flowers are uh, typically pollinated by long tongue bees. Uh, I've seen mostly bumblebees on the ones that I have and uh, once they're pollinated they're going to give way to a, a fruit uh, that's from what I've read edible only when it's fully ripe except for the seeds uh, all the other parts of the plant including the seeds are toxic but from what I've read uh, these fruits are edible once they're fully ripe so you can see this down here I was gonna do this video on this particular uh, this plant species in early spring when it first came up but I actually kinda wanted to wait and, uh, and be able to show this fruit now uh, like I said it, it, this will bloom in May uh, these fruits, however, won't really ripen until late summer. So I'm hopefully going to be able to try one this year. I wanted to try one last year, but uh, they fell to the ground or some, something knocked them off. I have a few more this year, so I'm hopeful that I'll be able to try one out. So these typically get to be about one to one and a half feet tall. Uh, they get a really big leaf on them. The leaves can be up to 8 to 10 inches across. Uh, in fact, the, the species name Peltatum comes from a Latin word, uh, which means shield. So, uh, so whoever named this, you know, kind of gave it a name, kind of resembles, you know, the, the, it kind of makes you think of a shield just because of the, the size of the leaves. Now, when I was looking, when I first discovered this plant, and I was first getting into native plants, I was kind of looking for a uh, uh, an alternative to hostas. You know, hostas are a non-native plant, and I like hostas, uh, but I wanted something with some big leaves. I wanted something native, and uh, so I started planting these. I actually have a little. There's a there's a few a little colony going on here. I planted one here about four years ago, and as you can see, it spread. Uh, hasn't spread real aggressively. I'd only consider them to be kind of moderate or slow spreading. They spread through underground rhizomes. Uh, you can propagate these by digging up those. If they, if they do uh, tend to start taking over, you know, you can you can dig them up and move them because uh, they will form colonies. Uh, another thing about these, thinking about planting these, is that is later in the summer you know, they will kind of die out. So they will kind of leave a uh, empty hole where they were growing. So you want to kind of keep that in mind. Uh, I do think they're a really attractive plant though. And uh, the flowers are very attractive. They always kind of grow underneath the uh, the leaves of the plant. Now the fruits are a really important uh, food source. Uh, mammals and stuff like that enjoy them, but really Eastern box turtles are really known to, to enjoy these fruits. So if you plant these, in your garden, you could encourage eastern box turtles uh, to come into your garden. I've never seen one around here. Um, I'd love to see one because I've always loved eastern box turtles. <clears throat> uh, as far as as far as uh, host plant goes, this particular plant, in my area at least, is a host plant for about seven different species of moths. Uh, some of those include the the golden borer moth, the may apple borer, and the serpentine webworm. So, you know, by planting that, not only, you know, could you hopefully encourage box turtles to come into your yard, but hopefully, you know, you'll encourage these different moth species to come into your yard as well. Uh, <clears throat> now, these typically like uh, moist, uh, shady sites. They do, they do best, really, in, in uh, full shade and moisture environments. 
However, once they are established, uh, they can uh, handle a little bit of drier conditions. In fact, I have these kind of planted here uh, next to a big maple tree. And, uh, you know, maple trees tend to dry out the ground. Uh, they suck a lot of moisture out. But these are doing pretty good. I have a couple other clusters in my yard, too. Uh, and I'm, I'm working on uh, getting these established in another little area of my yard. But so far, these are the ones that seem to be doing the best. And these are the ones that have... Uh, these are the only ones that have fruit on them this year, this little patch that I have here. So like I mentioned, these, these will come up in uh, early spring, March or April. Uh, once again, these, these flower typically in May, and then the fruits will develop. And uh, you should be able to, if you, know, if you so choose, I'm not encouraging anybody to eat one of these, uh, but if you so, should so choose, hopefully these will be ripening up towards the, uh, towards the end of July. Uh, so there you go. So this is, uh, once again, this is May apple, Podophyllum potatum. Uh, it's a wonderful native plant. It makes a wonderful addition to your shade garden or your woodland garden. And uh, it's, you know, it comes back reliably every year. So I would, uh, you know, if you're looking for another native plant to add uh, some more biodiversity into your garden to encourage pollinators and turtles and, to, you know, to help the environment, uh, I would encourage you to think about possibly adding some May apples into your garden. It's a wonderful native plant, and uh, I think you'll be happy with it. I think you'll like it. And, uh, you know, I uh, hope you like this video. I appreciate all my subscribers. Thanks for all the comments, the kind words. Thanks for, uh, you know, sharing the videos and for uh, uh, just, uh, you know, all the positive feedback that I've gotten over the last couple years of doing these videos. So once again, hope everybody has a safe and happy 4th of July, and uh, I'll talk to you on the next video. Have a great day. Bye.